Okay, so now we're going to discuss about the conductive system of the heart and vectors. Okay, so this is basically the cross section of your heart and I'm going to talk through each um, specialized cells which act as a conductive system. So as in the previous um, uh, lecture, we have discussed about cardiac action potential which is happening in one particular cell. Now we're going to have a look at uh, a comprehensive look at the cardiac action potential which has been transmitted from one side of the heart to the next side which will result in cardiac contraction. So to start with we're going to talk about certain specialized cells uh, which, which can produce impulses of their own. Now those, impul those specialized cells we call it as pacemakers. Now the most common the the pacemaker of our heart is the sinoatrial node, or we call it as the SA node. Okay, so I'm just going to look at. So this is a cross section of the heart. So the this is your right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, and your left ventricle. So <coughs> the impulses are starting from your right side of the heart or basically from the right atrium. And the right atrium, uh, at the junction of the sinus between the superior and the inferior vena cava, you have a specialized node, we call it as the sinoatrial node. Now these sinoatrial nodes are also cardiac myocytes, but they are just specialized. So they don't have the ability to contract themselves, but they have the ability to produce impulses, which we call it as by the term automatic, automaticity, sorry, automaticity. So the ability of the cell to produce an impulse by themselves, we call it as automaticity. And the most um, common or the most important automatic uh, cardiac cell in our body is a sinoatrial node. You have other cells also, which are able to produce impulses of their own but they will be coming into play only when your sinoatrial node is sick or when your SA node is not functioning. Okay, so to start with, you have your SA node. So the SA node is able to fire impulses. Okay, so just like the cardiac action potential, there is also a, a term called pacemaker potential, which is there is uh, more of calcium and potassium ion influx and efflux which produces a pacemaker potential. That means they are able to produce impulses of their own. Um, I'm not going detail into the pacemaker potential uh, because that will be out, more of outside of this context, which I'll be explaining it in a later uh, video. Now, so to start with the SA node, the SA node are able to fire impulses. And what happens is these impulses get transmitted into the right and the left atrium. So the impulses start from the SA node that's your SA node here. So the impulses will be traveling all across the right atrium and to the left atrium. So what happens is there will be muscular depolarization. The muscles get depolarized. There will be sodium ions going in. There will be calcium ions going in, potassium going out. And as a result of calcium influx, what happens is there will be a cardiac action potential and the muscles will contract. And these muscular contractions will be spreading throughout the muscles. The reason being, they are all syncytial. They have gap junctions. So one cell get activated, the next one get activated, and the impulses travel across. Now, because there is an electrical current flowing through, if I attach a device called as a voltimeter, the voltmeter is nothing but a device which measures voltage. So voltmeter, so basically electrocardiogram machine or ECG machine is basically a voltmeter which measures the potential differences. So what happens is there is an electrical current flowing through which will cause an, a, a polarity or a voltage which causes this needle to move. So it causes, so imagine this is your voltmeter that is attached to the heart. So with a, with a negative and a positive electrode, 
a bit of a physics there. So we are connecting a heart with a negative and a positive electrode and it is causing electrical current which causes this needle to move up and down. And that is the basis of your ECG. So the impulses start from SA node. It spreads through the right and the left atrium causing muscles to depolarize which causes the needles to move. The same happens in the ventricles as well. So this is the basic um, operation of an ECG machine or ECG. Now let's um, talk about <coughs> just a um, few more things. So the impulses are traveling from SA node. It depolarizes the heart and the, all the cardiac action potential or the electrical current go and bounce off here. So this structure, we call it as the annulus. So the annulus is a fibrous structure which is present between the atrium and the ventricle and all these cardiac action potential will go and bounce off just like going and hitting a wall. Okay, it's not able to penetrate. So these electrical currents go and hit the wall and it stops, stops there except for one structure we call this structure as the atrioventricular node. or we call it as the AV node. So, the, all the impulses which are starting from the right atrium and the left atrium, they go and hit the wall which is the fibrous annulus, which is, they are not, they don't have the ability to conduct impulses. So, the only structure which is able to conduct impulses from the SA node to the ventricle or from the atrium to the ventricle is the AV node. Now, AV node. So, AV node is also a specialized cardiac myocyte which is able to produce impulses of their own when the SA node fails. So if the SA node fails, the AV node takes over. Now the AV node is followed by another structure. So this structure is another specialized cardiac muscle which has the ability to propagate or its ability to conduct cardiac activity or electrical potential, we call that structure as the bundle of His. Call it as a bundle of His. Okay. Followed by the bundle of His, you have two structures here. So this structure, so this is the left side and this is the right side of the human heart. So on the left side, you can see this structure which is going through here. So this structure, I call it as the left bundle, left bundle branch. The left bundle branch. Also on the right side, you can see another tract going through and that is on the right side. So of course it is called as the right bundle branch. Okay. Now the left bundle branch has got numerous branches. As you can see, there are lots and lots of branches here. So these branches, they supply the interventricular septum. This is very important to understand the concept of ECG, how the QRS complexes are formed. So you have left and right bundle branch. The left bundle branch branches and supplies the septum, the interventricular septum. So, so the left bundle branch is supplying the septum. So it supplies the IV septum, interventricular septum. The right and the left bundle branch is branches into numerous tiny, tiny, tiny small branches. So you can see that there are, it splits into a number of small, small, small fibers. And these small fibers, we call it as the Purkinje fibers. Perkinji fibers. 
So the Purkinje fibers and the right and the left bundle branch are also able to produce impulses of their own, but they will be very, very slow. So the SA node has the most rapid firing ability. So it's just like a group of people having a meeting together and in such a way that the person who has the loudest voice, everybody will be attending to. So the person who speaks loudest, people tend to uh, address them more, um, more often. It's just like that. SA node has the highest firing ability, so the SA node acts as a primary pacemaker. If SA node is gone quiet, if the SA node is quiet, then the AV node starts to speak up. But not as fast as the SA node, it's much more slower than SA So if your SA node fails, your AV node takes over. If AV node takes your fails, your bundle of his takes over, and so on. As you progress from the left to, sorry, from the right towards the left, the firing impulses get slower and slower and slower. So when you start at SA node, it's in a rapid firing rate, then it slows down, slows down, and slows down. So if one fails, the next takes over, but in a slower rate. That's what I'm trying to say. And this forms the basis of heart blocks and things. So this is your conduction system. So to start with, you have SA node on the right side. Impulses are fired across the atrium. They go and bounce off the fibrous annulus because it hasn't got any ability to conduct impulses. And then it goes all two ventricles only through one way, so that acts as a gate, and that's your AV node, and AV node acts as a gatekeeper, and the, then impulses then travel to bundle of his, left and right bundle branch, and the Purkinje fibers. Now, the left bundle branch branches to small, uh, small, small, tiny fibers to supply the interventricular septum. So when the septum gets depolarized, it is from the left ventricle. Okay, so this is the basic conductive system of your heart. Now I'm going to talk about vectors. Okay, now this is um, a concept that you need, it's a bit of a physics in there, but you need to understand that to get a thorough concept of ECG. Okay, now let's talk about vectors now. Now, what is a vector? So let's start from the basics. Okay, so. Okay, so what is a vector? So imagine I am at a place called A and I want to travel to a place called B, right? So if I'm traveling from A to B or if I'm saying that, okay, the distance from A to B is about 20 kilometers. So I'm traveling, I'm traveling from A to B which is of magnitude of length 20 kilometers. And that is my magnitude. Okay, so I'm going a particular length. Okay, so I'm driving my car and I'm going 20 kilometers from A to B. That is my magnitude. Now there are few ways to get from A to B. I can travel straight, I can travel north and reach B. I can travel through south and reach B. So I can change my directions. So I have a magnitude and I have a direction. And that is what we call it as a vector. So vector is something, basically, we are traveling. So in case of heart, it's just the electrical potential. So electrical potential is traveling from one place to the other in a particular direction. So there is a magnitude, so this is the magnitude. And this is the direction. So direction plus magnitude. So the direction plus magnitude, we call it as a vector. So have a look, so it's direction plus magnitude makes it vector. So I'm traveling from A to B, which is 20 kilometers, and I'm traveling in a particular direction to reach from A to B. So that magnitude and direction together makes a vector. Now why is this important in heart and ECG? Let me explain.
Okay, so you have your heart here. So if you look here, you can see the impulses are traveling from the SA node, which is on the right side of the heart, towards the left side. So it is going in this direction, right? So the electrical impulses are moving in this direction. So the vector will be, I'm just drawing this vector here. So the net vector of this heart is like this. So the vector, I'm representing vector by an arrow. So it's traveling from the right side to the left side in this direction. So in this direction means, so if I'm standing here, my electrical impulses are moving this way. Okay, the impulses are moving from the right side towards the left side of the heart, which is represented by this arrow. Okay. Now, always remember when you put your ECG leads on, there will be a negatively charged electrode and there will be a positively charged electron. Okay. So I'm not going into the details of the leads, I'm just remember this, you have a negatively charged electrode and you have a positively charged electrode. And the vector is moving this way. All right. Now, I want to explain one more thing. I'm just going to cut or I'm just going to take one cardiac muscle here. Okay. One cardiac muscle here. And this cardiac muscle is in resting stage. That means the net polarity is negative as I explained in the previous video. If I take one cardiac muscle out, it will be having a negatively charged potential. So which I represented as a minus. And I'm connecting this to a graph here or a voltimeter as I said earlier. So voltimeter is a device which Okay, so the voltimeter is a device which measures the voltage. Okay, so I'm, I've just cut a piece of myocardium and I've attached to a, um, a voltimeter. And I'm giving some stimulus to this muscle. So I'm stimulating this muscle. What happens? So as I said earlier, when the stimulus comes, what happens? There will be a rapid sodium influx. There will be a positive charge. The cells get depolarized. Calcium moves in and it will become positive. So what happens is the cells will become positive. So this is the negative side and this is the positive side. Okay, so this is a positive electrode and this is a negative electrode. All right. So when I'm applying an electric current, what happens is it'll become this will become charged. Each of the cell will become positive. Positive, positive, positive positive. So it's going on and going on and going on. So as you can see that the electrical current is moving from negative to positive. Okay. And so negative to positive. So it's, so the vector will be in this direction. So negative, so it'll, and it's have got a positive head. So it's, so basically what I'm saying is there is a positive electric current moving from left to right and the vector will be in the positive direction. This makes, this makes a positive deflection to the voltimeter. The voltimeter will make a positive deflection. So when it is at resting stage, there is nothing happening, which is a straight line. And when there is a depolarization or a vector moving towards the positive electrode, it makes a positive, positive deflection. So it makes a positive deflection here. Okay, so going up is positive, going down is negative. So it makes a positive deflection. So that's what a vector is. So basically, so I've just explained it one more time. So I'm taking a one cardiac myocyte or one ventricular myocardium uh, and I'm just connecting to a voltimeter and I'm stimulating this. So at 
initially it is in the resting state and then it will become more electropositive which causes the deflection of the needle towards the positive side which makes a positive deflection okay now let's do another experiment let's change these electrodes so let's see so this cell so this is another myocardium here and I'm putting positive electrode here and a negative electrode here so I've just changed it and all the cells are at resting stage so they're all negative okay and now as I said earlier I'm, I'm producing and I'm stimulating one of the myocardium stimulating it and that will become positive so a rapid stimulus of the myocardium makes it positive so it's getting stimulus, stimulus, stimulus and now what happened, what's happening now so again the electrical current is moving towards this direction and that is a positive current moving from left to right but if you look here you have got positive electrode here and negative electrode here so you have a positive current traveling towards a negative electrode so I'll explain one more time I've just changed the leads now from positive opposite and negative this side and when an electrical impulse occurs you have a positive current going this way but your positive electrode is electrode is placed here so basically you have a vector which is traveling away from the positive electrode so what is that uh, uh, vector means that is a negative vector so any vector moving away from the positive electrode we call it as a negative vector so that will make this machine will make a negative deflection it will make a negative deflection which will be seen as like this so the voltmeter will make a negative deflection on the ECG paper which you see it as a downward deflection so any positive vector we see as a positive flexion or positive movement and any vector which is moving away from the electrode we call it as a negative um, movement or a negative um, movement of the graph so that's a negative deflection that is a positive deflection I hope you understand up to this that so this is the basics of how the vectorial diagrams are coming into ECG and this will make you understand how the P, Q, R, S, T form, waveforms are formed. Now coming in, so as I said earlier, so the vector is traveling from the right side to the left side and the resultant force is a vector towards the leftward and downward, so this is the head of the uh, human being and this is the foot and the, the vector is moving in this direction okay and that is what we call it as a vector now let's explain on ne now let's have a look on each of the ECG waveforms and how they are formed okay so, so I'm going to take this off and let's draw some ECG graphs now so we have explained about vectors so basically vector means it's your magnitude and the direction and if if a vector is moving towards if a positively charged vector is moving towards a positive charge we call it as a positive deflection if the positive charge is moving away from the positive electrode we call we, we cause a negative deflection now let's see so the first cardiac action potential starts from the SA node the SA node fires an impulse so it fires an electric current the electric current moves from right atrium to left atrium and it spreads all through the atrial myocardium and when so as I said so the electrical current is moving from negative to positive so I have attached this heart to a negative and positive electrode and when a cardiac action potential occurs electric current travels from the left sorry from the right towards the left in the positive direction so 
So when your atrial myocardium is getting positively charged, so it's all getting positively charged, so it is producing a vector which is of positive head towards the positive electrode. You have a positive electrode here, negative electrode here. So it produces a positive vector towards the positive lead. And the ECG machine on the graph or the ECG will cause a positive deflection because as you see there the vector is moving towards the positive electrode. The atria is depolarized, depolarization is positively charged and it is the net force is towards the positive electrode which causes a positive deflection. And that positive deflection, we call it as a P wave. Okay. So this is your first ECG waveform. So that's a P wave. Any questions up to that? No. Okay. Now the impulses are traveling from SA node, and then the impulses go and hit the fibrous annulus. Nothing happens because it's not been conducted. The only way of the impulses to travel from the atria to the ventricle is through this structure. We call it as the AV node. Now, the AV node, the AV node, so as normal cardiac myocytes, you have, it get activated by sodium channels. Whereas AV node uh, is mostly uh, depolarized by calcium channels. So AV node has got predominant slow calcium channels. So when the rapidly coming impulses get into the AV node, so it's just like you're driving from a highway and you're just getting into a roundabout. So when you see a roundabout, you'll have to slow down. Just like that, when the impulses coming from the SA node, it reaches the AV node and it slows down. So that there will be an electrical potential, but it is very, very, very small that the ECG machine won't be able to pick up. So when it reaches the AV node, the heart goes into a silence. So this is called as an electrical silence of the heart, which is represented as a straight line. Okay, so it is represented as a straight line. Okay, so I'll explain again. So the impulses are traveling from the atrium, it hits the fibrous annulus, and some of the impulses traveling from SA node to AV node, and it's just like you're traveling, you're traveling at uh, 80 k's an hour through a highway, reaching a roundabout, and then you slow down. You slow down, and you slow down in such a way that uh, the electrical activity won't be picked up in the electrocardiograph. So there will be, it is shown as a straight line, which you call it as the electrical silence of the heart. Okay? So we got P wave, and we have a straight line now. Now from the AV node, there will be a rapid firing of impulse or the impulses has gone through that roundabout and there is another highway again. So it rapidly goes into the septum. Okay. Now it's time for the next vector. So when the impulses come to the septum, you can see that there are two types of bundle bundles, bundle branches. So this is a left bundle branch and that's the right bundle branch. The important thing is, your ventricles get depolarized in three stages. Okay, your ventricle gets depolarized in three stages. One is in the septum. Second one is on the major ventricular myocardium. And the third one is on the ventricular base. So this is the ventricular base. This is the base of ventricle. So let, let me explain one more time. So there is your septum. Then you have your ventricular myocardial mass. And then you have your base. Okay. So let's uh, draw another picture of the ventricles. Just the ventricles so that it's not Here. So, I'll just draw another diagram for you. Just taking 
the plug in if I press off. Okay. I'm just just drawing the ventricular myocardium by itself. So as I said, so this is a ventricular myocardium. So as I said, the ventricular myocardium uh, depolarizes or the ventricular contraction occurs in three stages. So one is the septum. So this is a septum. Then your ventricular myocardial muscle and then the ventricular base. Okay. So we have talked about atrial depolarization. Now we are coming into ventricular depolarization. So we have talked about P wave and the straight line which is PR and roll which I will explain it in a second. So we are going into the ventricular phase, ventricular depolarization phase. As I said earlier, you have your left and the right bundle branch. So the left bundle branch supplies the intraventricular septum. Okay. Now, so what happens is when the electrical current reaches the interventricular septum, the electrical current or the muscles near to the left bundle branch, so the muscles near to the left bundle branch get depolarized first. Okay. So let me explain one more time. So the muscles or the myocytes which are closer to the left bundle branch get depolarized first. So they will become positive first. So they will become positive. So, so these are all the negative ions or negative muscles. So they are getting depolarized and they will get depolarized first which is closer to the left bundle branch. And then the remaining and then the remaining sept, ventricular septum depolarizes. So, so the current is flowing from left side towards the right side. So what happens is it makes a vector towards this direction. Remember the overall vector was is supposed to be like this. You have your negative electrode here, you have your positive electrode here. So the overall vector is going like this and your positive electrode is here. You can see that the septum is depolarized so your septum is depolarized. So your septum is getting depolarized in this direction. What does that mean? That means this vector is moving away from the positive electrode. This forms the first component of the QRS complex. We call it as so that so what happens? So this vector is moving away from the positive electrode and it causes a negative deflection on the ECG machine and that we call it as the Q wave okay, I'm not talking about pathological Q wave a physiological Q wave so, and Q waves are not seen in all the leads which we will discuss about the leads in a second so this forms the Q wave so the Q wave is formed by the septum depolarization formed by a vector which is moving away from the positive electrode. So basically our electrodes are, you have a negative electrode here, you have a positive electrode here and you have a positive electrode on your foot. So basically the, we are placing a positive electrode on the left foot and this vector is moving away from that electrode which causes a negative deflection and we call it as the Q wave. And after that the impulses start to move into the myocardium. The impulses starts to move into the myocardium. So, the, when the impulse, so this is the left major ventricle, um, uh, left ventricle, and this is the right ventricle. And both the right and the left ventricle contracts together, so they happens simultaneously. And when these electrical charges are depolarized, when the cardiac myocells are depolarized, so this structure 
so of myocardium we call it as the epicardial surface and this structure I call it as the endocardial surface so endocardial means the inside lining of the heart and epicardial means the outer covering of the heart so the impulses start to travel through the epicardial surface of the myocardium so the myocardium has two parts the endocardial surface and the epicardial surface so the impulses start to travel into the epi endocardial surface and then it starts to depolarize the other cells so what happens is the resultant vector will be in this direction so, so, so I'll explain one more time after the septum what happens is your myocardium has two surfaces so the inner surface I call it as the endocardial surface the outer surface I call it as the epicardial surface so the endocardial surface which is closer to the inner wall get depolarized first followed by the muscles which are closer to the epicardial surface which makes a positive vector or the electrical current is flowing towards the positive electrode and that causes a positive deflection onto the ECG waveform which is the famous R wave now we have the R wave formed so I'll explain one more time so the impulses are traveled through the septum and then it moves into the endocardial surface which is the inner lining of the uh, myocardium and the, and the electrical impulses travel towards the positive electrode or the cells get stimulated in this direction on both the right and to the left ventricle which occurs simultaneously and because these vectors are po moving towards the positive electrode it makes a positive deflection which we call it as the R wave that's how the R waves are formed so the R waves are formed it has got a positive deflection because it's got a positive vector because as you know the vector is traveling from negative to positive side and the ventricular major ventricular myocardial mass on the left side and the right side depolarizes from the endocardial surface into the epicardial surface towards the positive electrode on both the right ventricle and the left ventricle which can cause a positive deflection onto your voltimeter which is your R wave and finally so as I already said the ventricles get depolarized in three stages which are they the first one is a septal depolarization second one is a ventricular depolarization and third one is a basal depolarization or depolarization of the base now what happens so the the myocardial cells in the base gets depolarized finally okay so they get depolarized they get depolarized here so and uh, the electrical current is coming this direction so it's going this direction so what happens is when the ventricular myocardial cells get depolarized on the base it produces a vector is going this direction so the vector on the ventricular myocardial base or base of the heart it produces a vector like this with a positive head so positively charged myocardial cells but the flow is in this direction away from the positive electrode so it is moving away from the positive electrode because the, the, the current goes like this and goes up towards the negative electrode or away from the positive electrode so as I said earlier with the experiment that I've uh, conducted the, electro the electrical current when it is moving away from a positive electrode is considered as a negative deflection and it causes a negative deflection of the ECG which we call as the S wave so QRS complex nomenclature uh, the rule is the first negative deflection uh, during a ventricular depolarization we call it as the Q wave the first positive deflection we call it as the R wave the second negative depolarization or second sorry second negative deflection 
we call it as the S wave. Let me uh, uh, make it clear one more time. The first negative deflection is Q wave. The first positive deflection is R wave. The second negative deflection is the S wave, which forms the complex QRS, which is the ventricular depolarization or ventricular contraction, which occurs in three steps. The Q wave, which is the septal depolarization, the R wave, which is the ventricular myocardial mass depolarization, S wave, the final basal depolarization of the ventricles. The Q wave and the S wave are showing negative deflection because in the septum, the resultant vector is away from the positive electrode here. It forms a vector which is away from the positive electrode, which forms a negative deflection on the voltmeter and then followed by the myocardial uh, depolarization which is starting from the endocardial surface all the way to the uh, epicardial surface which is going in this direction which is towards the positive electrode resulting in an R wave and then what happens is the electric current which is flowing from here goes up towards the negative electrode and it depolarizes the ventricular base ventricular base and because the electrical resultant electrical vector is traveling away from the positive electrode, it forms a negative deflection called as S wave. So this forms the QRS complex. Now that the QRS is considered as the ventricular depolarization. So I'll just put it as ventricular depol ventricular depolarization. Similarly, in atrium, when the atrial muscles get depolarized and they go in this direction, it formed a positive vector towards the positive electrode and it formed a waveform called as the P wave. The P wave represents the atrial depolarization. And then the impulses go into AV node and AV node is so slow it is a slow conductor of the impulses and the electrical charges are very minimal that the ECG is not able to pick it up and resulting in an electrical silence of the heart which is represented as a straight line and this straight line we call it as the PR interval. Now the, the values of these waveforms we will I'll discuss in the next lecture. I'm just give the basic idea. So that that distance between the P wave and the R wave we call it as or before the QRS complex we call this wave as the PR interval which represents the electrical silence of the heart. And then finally I have explained the QRS complex. Now next so we have completed the ventricular depolarization now we go into ventricular repolarization so or ventricular relaxation. Okay for that I have another diagram here. Okay. So that's a, that's a ventricular muscle. So let's uh, talk here, all right? So as I said earlier, the depolarization occurs in this direction, right? So that is from the, so this is the endocardial surface and this is the epicardial surface. So it, the depolarization occurs in this direction. So how about repolarization? So because the ventricular muscles are contracted, the inner surface of the blood vessels will be still contracted. So the repolarization phase always started from outwards to inwards. So the repolarization starts the opposite way. So the repolarization starts from where? From the epicardial surface into the endocardial surface. So this is the epicardial surface. I'll just put it as EPC. And this is endocardial surface. I'll just put it as EDC. So this is endocardial surface of the myocardium. This is the epicardial surface of the myocardium. So when it, when it was depolarizing, the impulse was traveling from inwards to outwards. So repolarization, it occurs the opposite way. Now, what do you mean by repolarization? So repolarization means the positively charged muscles are becoming negative. Okay. So, so they are the positive... These are all becoming positive in this way, and now it's becoming so all the positively ele charged, ele um, charged muscles are becoming negative. So they go negative from 
outwards to inwards outwards to inwards okay and that causes a vector because of the repolarization it causes a vector and the vector head will be having a negatively charged vector then the vector head will be having a negatively charged vector and this negatively charged vector and the repolarization as i said it goes in this direction so it goes in this direction okay so outwards to inwards it goes in this direction so the repolarization vector will be like this so it has got a negatively charged head now comes the trick now th this is a negatively charged a vector which is going away from the positive electrode but it is moving towards the negative charge so when repolarization occurs so repolarization occurs in the opposite way in such a way that the negative charge is flowing towards the negative charge so negative to negative makes positive okay so when an electric current with a negatively charged depolarization or negatively charged vector is traveling towards a negative electrode the resultant vector will be positive that's an important concept to remember so any vector any positively head vector moving towards a positive uh, electrode we call it as a positive vector any negatively charged vector moving towards the negative electrode is also a positive vector and because of that that forms another wave form we call it as the t wave so let me explain one more time so t wave we call it as ventricular repolarization where your cardiac muscles are relaxing and it travels it travels it creates a negative vector because it's traveling the opposite way of positive depolarization and it forms a negatively headed vector so this is a negatively headed vector here okay so this negatively vector uh, headed vector is moving towards the negative electrode which means negative to negative makes it a eh, positive because the negative headed vector is moving towards the negative electrode and the voltmeter will have a positive deflection which we call it as the t wave so this is how your basic ecg waves are formed so just to recap i'll just go through this complex one more time because it's a complex procedure so the sa not fires a impulse impulse get transmitted to the right and the left atrium and the muscles are depolarized and the depolarization means it it's becoming more and more positively charged and the positively charged vector so i have a negative electrode here and a positive electrode here and the current is flowing in this direction uh, and because the atrial muscles are contracting the resultant vector will be towards the positive electrode so when the vector with a positive head is traveling towards a positive electrode it creates a positive deflection which we call it as a p wave then the impulses travel from the sa node to the av node and in the av node the av node is a slow conductor because it is predominantly uh, controlled by calcium channels rather than that of sodium channel and predominantly controlled by slow calcium channel so the electrical activity will be insignificant very very nil significant and you won't be able to see any deflections in the uh, voltmeter which we consider as a electrical silence of the heart or we call it as av delay which is represented as a straight line we call it as a pr interval followed by there is a rapid ventricular depolarization ventricular depolarization is divided into three stages one is septum myocardium and the base when the ventricular depolarized the ventricular septum is innervated by the left bundle branch the left bundle branch when they get when they stimulate the septum the electrical current will be moving from the left side towards the right side because septum is only supplied by or septum is controlled only by the left bundle branch so the impulse will be moving away from the positive electrode which causes a negative deflection we call it as a q wave and q wave represents septal depolarization followed by there will be ventricular myocardial 
contraction of ventricular myocardial depolarization ventricular myocardium has two parts one is the inner endocardial surface and the outer epicardial surface when the current so the current will be tending to flow from the inner surface to the outer surface that means from the purkinje fibers and outwards and the resultant vector will be a vector which is going towards the positive electrode and because the positive current with a positive vector is moving towards the positive electrode it forms a r wave followed by the base of the ventricle gets depolarized the base of the ventricles gets depolarized and this is uh, represented by the s wave the s wave have a negative deflection because a positive electrode the positive current is moving away from the ventricle and it is moving away from the positive electrode connected there and that forms the s wave and finally the repolarization or the um, resting membrane potentially is reachieved by repolarization phase that means the cells will start to become negative and that's in the opposite direction it is go from here to here that means it is producing a negative current because the positive is becoming more and more negative and this negative vector is moving towards the negative electrode which that means then when the negative force is moving towards the negative electrode it creates a positive deflection onto the voltmeter we call it as the t wave and this is how the p q r s t r form now you have a you will have a question that why doesn't we, we see the same p q r s t in all the leads this is because each leads look in heart in different perspectives okay so it's just like a uh, uh, one eyed man look uh, six one eyed men looking an elephant in different angles so they'll be seeing different parts of the heart so this is the basics of pqr and st and you are not expected to see all these waveforms in uh, all the leads so this is just to make an understanding of how the waveforms are formed so if we go to other leads you'll be seeing slightly different which we'll be going through the limb leads and the chest leads in the next session so this is